morning guys welcome back to another video today we're gonna be jumping back on the mini truck trailer project but we're gonna have a little bit of deja vu um Grab some sunglasses over here. We got a freshy pair. So when I first started buying these electric swing arm sunglasses, they're about 40 bucks on Amazon. Now they're 90 bucks or like $98 every time you want to buy a pair, which sucks. I used to buy a pair like every couple of months because I am bad about scratching sunglasses, um, especially when I'm always bending down for work. Things fall off, they hit the ground, you can step on them, whatever, whatever. Anyways, before we jump back on the trailer project today, we got to go back to the oodles of millions of dollar neighborhood that we installed the sauna in uh, last week. And I think we all agreed the roof on that sauna didn't look Shuffle. that great. So today we're going to be dressing that up with Dave. Dave. Then we gotta go pick up a couple more U-bolts for the trailer axles and uh, let's hopefully start building the actual gooseneck part today. Alrighty, we have made it. Let's get in here. We have been granted access. Still blows me away that we're staring at like 19, 20 million dollars right there. For a shack. It's a shack. It's a nice shack, but it's a shack. Oh my goodness, what do we got here? Look at this. We got us an Escalade like executive limo going on here. Look at that, they extended it like 16 inches, a little piece they cut in. The destination is on your right. I like it, I like it. Dave, Rano, Rano, Dave, 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 Rano, Rano, Dave. Hey, your camera's backwards. Is it still shooting at me? So, yeah, I guess that's like forwards, man. Saw some Progo. Uh-oh. Now, see, I went to go buy some plywood today. Uh -oh. I'm kind of recovered now. Okay. <laughs> so, OSB, 716 OSB was 17 bucks, like, because it's the cheapest sheet material. Right. used to be like nine bucks, you know, but COVID. So then I went in, you know, to buy a sheet so that we could get the copper here. And I walked in the Home Depot this morning. Yeah. And it said $53. And I was like, huh? <laughs> and then I was like, well, you know, maybe I'm looking, maybe I'm looking at the wrong. And then I, I looked over there and I saw like $93 on some other stuff. And then I was like, well, collapse of civilization as we know it. <laughs> but on a brighter note, because you know, uh -huh. we got the sunshine, much better weather than the last it time we were nice here. here. Yeah. yeah. Um, nice can here. we talk about how great the van looks, dude? Man, I have gotten a lot of compliments. Nice. Thanks be all because of your tips on how, look at to, this. how to mask everything out. So, you know, Dave got some new meat on these things. Look, look at these beautiful tires right there. But then he went ahead and he, you know, he didn't want to spend a bunch of money because clearly he spends all money on plywood. So he opted to uh, just a nice, beautiful rust-oleum paint job here. Like, well, now hang on, dog. I mean, she got like a couple of a couple of tips here. I mean, Jesus, dude, this was like the gold standard. I've had multiple compliments on it, and everybody thinks that I went ahead and spent money on the wheels. I didn't. I just followed Rhino's little uh, little moves here. Uh, you mask it with these index cards, you know, sitting in there. I took the hubcaps off, right? And then you use this self-etching Rust-Oleum spray paint primer. And then first coat, second coat dude looking good and then I, I did the hub i did the hub caps i guess you call them right did that later on let it cure up and then boom baby and like the two people who i wouldn't think would compliment it my wife and my hippie tenant okay. <laughs> <laughs> both complimented it thinking that they were like new dude we've been doing some off-roading you must have gone to the dump <laughs> I don't know what that's from, man. They're doing a lot of... Uh, look at that, look at that. Of, instead of fixing the homeless crisis in, in my neighborhood, they, yeah. they're adding bike lanes. Everywhere. Oh, good. Yeah, that'll fix everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> with the fuel prices. <laughs> Not that they're trying to force you out of vehicles or anything. Now, Doug, we got a... Uh -oh. I mean, that's all, right. all fine and dandy, but we have a brain teaser on our hands. I showed up because it was going to be a quick easy so I can go back to my other job well no i didn't say it was labor intensive okay I, just, I like a good brain teaser it's a brain teaser, i like a good man. brain teaser right. okay so, well let's start since we're here we'll start here beautiful copper by the way you know i said hey send that to me protected looks great <laughs> there, i mean there was something taped to it at one point you know <laughs> Okay, whatever. Okay, you know, we're going with the flow here, Rhino. Now, by the way, if you guys are wondering why Dave purchased a million dollars worth of plywood, it was to protect the copper. That's true. That's this it. Sheet, this <laughs> is a sheet that made me understand that, oh, well, we're either in Venezuela or Cuba. That's to the edge. Yeah, so it'll be. Okay. Yeah. Granted, the sauna already had a waterproof roof on it. Dave's doubly waterproofed it, and then we're putting copper on top of it to look good. So to the roofers that are about to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not. Uh, we don't pretend to be. Roofers, the, the problem is that the, it's like this really cheap looking silvery foil roof underneath it, which the, if you're next door at the house next door, then it's like a real eyesore. So everything else here is copper. Yeah, it's kind of a bad spot. Oh, it's got sheet on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, 
Oh, so it's a mandatory to blow. <laughs> it's all right. I'll grab it. And then we're just going to go yep. try and go above. All right. There we go. Let's just leave it right there and we'll slide them off. All right. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. I appreciate it. Oh, Sorry, I'm going right. to move some of your rocks. No, no worries. No Thank worries. you, man. Are they, are they forcing you guys to go electric now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, but we don't do, get to do that much with this. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. No, it's better than those. We got some other still, uh, still, the brand is still, it's a big battery pack. Yeah with the big long cord i was like and it's the trimmer i was like how are you going to climb up there with it oh yeah that? yeah yeah that went well david look at this we got them up here safely yeah and you're, it's uh super safe and that's three quarters pick up on it on this side so it comes over that yeah there we go great work buddy yeah dude that's what i'm talking about easy day so check this out let's i like your idea of moving them up and then i want to take those four by fours and slide them under for some glue yeah and then we glue it and then we slide the four by four out and I, Talk okay, to come to me about a 16th. There we go, right there. I like that if you can live with that. I still love everything. Beautiful nails. Because I'm a sucker for punishment. What's a box of copper nails cost? Seven bucks a pound. Not bad. Not bad at all. You're not a fastener, you know? All right, y'all. So the plan is there's going to be like a two foot overlap. These are two four foot sheets here. So one side's gonna get nailed, the front side's gonna get glued. Again, this roof's already like triple waterproofed. We're not worried about the waterproofing here. And then we're gonna glue this seam where it overlaps. That way you don't see any fasteners going anywhere around the edge of this actual roof itself. Lift up on the front here. That gives us a gap. Now we can put all of our adhesive that we're gonna be using to seal up this front edge. There it is. Is that what we were missing there? Yeah. So we got the first sheet down here. Dave's giving it a nice good roll. Make sure all that adhesive sets around the edge. And again, like none of this is an actual roof. There's a roof underneath this whole structure that Dave built on top. Plus he waterproofed the crap out of his roof on top of the roof. And, and there's a gap. So air can get in there and don't freak out. How far back are we? Right you said you got what, three inch? Yeah. Okay. Three. Be, as they say, liberal. Good to go? Coming down. Coming down. Shirt off, so I feel like Tarzan. <laughs> I was just walking over to Dave in the bushes over here where he hides his uh, <laughs> piece of angle. <laughs> Yesterday it was so nice that uh, I didn't have a shirt on, you know. It was like the first nice day in a while, right? Yeah. I don't have a shirt on. I was walking back here. I was like, man, I feel like Tarzan. It's a little jungly back here, but then, see, you guys know I love tropical. I love this. The ranch is going to look like this at some point, but then you get the perfect mix of beautiful tropical like we're in, and then, like, you you got your own beach right here. So for everybody wondering what the oodles of millions of dollars gets you, it's, it's, that's what you're paying for. You want me to bring your shirt for you, Tarzan? Yeah, yeah. All right, I got you your shirt, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just oh, feel God. free. Now, see, guys, copper's cool. Copper looks beautiful, and it's like nice, brand new, shiny penny-like world of copper. But most people put copper on their house because they want it to tarnish and they want it to look like that. Which that ain't for me. You just spent fifteen hundred dollars to make something look moldy green. Never understood it, but it's a high-end thing. Everybody loves it. And speaking of high-end, if you're wondering, do shirts come off on jobs like this with me, Dave? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You build a restaurant, you build an indoor something. We've done projects where Dave's welding inside of a restaurant, shirtless, and people still hire us. Somebody asked me to put my shirt on, and you know what I said? What? I quit. Alrighty, y'all, well, uh, hopefully you can see she is all done, wrapped up. We're gonna head to the shop now, and we're gonna some trailer stuff.
All right, y'all, well, we have both axles fully on here. I don't know exactly, you know, the weight ratio or whatever it's supposed to look like, but I think we did a pretty good job here of getting the axles in a good spot. Now, I'm assuming for these 3,500 pound axles, the leaf pack setup that I got, it's for bigger tires, because you can see, uh, it's a good size kind of weird gap in between those two tires. I honestly think for at the ranch, it's gonna be perfect for all the crazy weird terrain that we have. Especially when you see all the nice articulation we got going on there. She's actually weighted pretty good. I mean, I got all my weight on it. I'm on the back half here. And uh, well, you know, though obviously I'm probably not heavy enough, but those wheels aren't coming off the ground. We got Chris, we're gonna get her level here. Grab the big jack stands, put those up front here. Now here's where the like conundrum of gooseneck hitches and all that's gonna come into play. Really, the only reason I'm putting this as, or I'm building this as a gooseneck is because it's gonna be cool for YouTube. That's it. It's so much less practical to be a gooseneck trailer for this type of application. If I took that two by four material that we got from our friends over at JC Metal Supply and ran it up underneath here to build my tongue, it would hit like perfect height for the hitch on the trailer right there, or on the mini truck, I should say. Maybe by the time uh, this video's over, we decided we're not building a gooseneck anymore. Uh, my other issue is, so obviously with a gooseneck hitch, it needs to go, um, the actual ball needs to be right above the axles. This is a dump bed, which poses a couple more problems here. Get the bed raised up here. So obviously being a dump bed, it's got a hydraulic ram in it. And if we were to run something right across where the axles are, which would be right here, to hold a ball, you'll see that obviously that conflicts with the hydraulic ram there. So now we gotta get creative on how to have a ball underneath the bed and knock it in the way. I'd like to attach to the actual frame, but then again, this little subframe that they built for the whole hydraulic dump bed setup actually looks stronger than uh, anything else on the truck. So one of my ideas is I make something that goes across here, spans this distance, but then it has pins that come through on this side and a little plate bar goes across and you can pull the pins and you can remove this if you want to use it as a dump bed. Now we need to figure out our distances here on how long we need. So basically we're going to have our two verticals that come up. We're going to have our horizontals that come in over the bed and have to hit center of the axle here. Well, we need to make sure those are long enough that this thing can fully turn underneath it and not end up binding up and we jackknife the trailer and honestly, I think we just go underneath at this height, but we don't want to damage anything. So. We want to make sure this thing can fully turn underneath um, the actual gooseneck part of the trailer. So what Zach was saying is we should take the tr truck, set it at like a 45 degree angle, and then give us, a, you know, six to eight to 10 inches, whatever we want here. And then from there, we come up, measure over to the axle, and that'll tell us how long these arms need to be. So I'm gonna grab a jack right now, jack the truck up, position it at a 45 degree angle here, and uh, we'll go from there. Go ahead, what was that? I bet you I can figure out the distance without you doing what you're doing. Okay, go ahead. No, you can come up with your measurement and I'll come up with my measurement. Well, come up with yours first before I move it and make it easy. Okay. Okay. Well, don't videotape my idea. Well, what, they, they gonna sell it, your secrets? They sell my secrets. I did go to college, right? Is that what you call that? <laughs> hey, trust saying that with a straight face there, buddy. <laughs> I went to college. Okay. There's, there's, so the college Chris went to, it was right next to our high school. And they called it 13th grade. <laughs> For a reason, because yeah, it wasn't okay. it was college-ish. They almost lost their accreditation at one point because they were so bad. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, but the classes I took there, they're, they're cool. They taught me a lot. Okay. Oh, here we go. The hypotenuse of the triangle Ryan, of pi. I what? was good at math in high school. You weren't. Hey, I can figure shit out. Yeah, all I needed to know was money. I got money down. If it's money, I calculate it. Everything else, they got calculators for that. You do time Oh, we got your time class? Do you need scratch paper or are you good? Take your time, buddy. Take your time. He looks very serious. Look at that. Look at that. He's got this. Six inches. I heard six inches. Don't forget the hypotenuse. Okay. Got the hypotenuse. Well, now we're guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing 23 inches. Huh? From here to there, 23 inches get. Wait, is that what you were calculating? Yeah. That's not what we're trying to figure out. What are, we, oh, what are we trying to figure out? The length of these arms that come over to the bed. No, we weren't. Yeah, we were. We were like, you know, because you got to turn it at a 45 yeah. degree and they got to And then we leave a little gap there. Right? Yeah. Okay. And then from there, we know how long to make these, like. Okay, but I'm, I'm talking about, you got, okay. But you, no, you might want to go out. back to that college, get your money back. No, you got to figure out how 
big of a space you need there because if you turn yeah well, at that, at that angle no 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 like, yeah okay. at the angle so but if it's straight to straight like if it's like this okay it's gonna be 23 inches apart <laughs> Okay, so Chris is gonna go find a gooseneck trailer down the street to measure off of. Meanwhile, let's see if we can actually make some real calculations make sense here. Now remember guys, a lot of what you see on this channel, we're making it up as we go. This is no different here. I don't even know if I'm gonna have enough room to get this out of 45 inside the shop. Come on, booger. So Zach was saying, we essentially get the truck to a 45, give us whatever clearance we want here, six, 10, 12 inches, I feel like more is better just in case we're like going up a hill and it brings the back of the trailer a little bit closer. Um, I guess that would be when we we're going downhill, but the trailer's still going uphill. And then from there, we should have our measurements on what we got for total clearance. So right there, I'm gonna say we're, we're 45 to enough. So from here, this point, I'm gonna plumb up with our level. I'll probably end up clamping a piece of steel here. Plumb up, measure over, center of our axle. Right here, we're looking at a about 11 inches or so. I think that's plenty of room in case there's any kind of weird articulation in the trailer. Could be completely wrong. We've got this clamped in now. Now we need to mark center of the axle on the bed. And whew, that's gonna be pretty long there. I'm I was guessing a little over five foot just like before this project even really started. Um, and we just kind of had a frame together. That's why I didn't want to cut this piece of two by four down into like 10 foot sections in case it was gonna be five foot something. Then I would have totally screwed myself and wasted a lot of material. So let me get some tape. We're gonna mark the center of the bed and then go from there and see just how long these boogers are gonna have to be. Alrighty, found us a little piece of exhaust here that'll probably work. It should be a five inch exhaust. The actual coupler portion that we're gonna be welding onto the front of the gooseneck is I believe four and a quarter, four and a half inches in diameter, which it's big, but you can't find many gooseneck parts. Uh, I could probably have built it, but by the time I end up buying a couple pieces of tubing, it's cheaper just to buy a pre-made one, even though it's kind of obnoxiously big. But all right, that's gonna be our gooseneck coupler. Those are our verticals. Let's measure the distance. I'm gonna go off of the front side here, which shows we got about five foot five, five foot six. If we go to center, five foot seven, which is kind of exactly where I thought we would end up being. So that's good. That means like something in my brain's working somewhat correctly. <laughs> Just get kind of an idea of what this is gonna look like. Hopefully it doesn't look too goofy. That's kind of what I worry about is this piece is gonna be super long and it's gonna look goofy, but I don't think that's too bad. Obviously heights and all that's gonna be different. Don't worry about this looking like a freaking erector set right now and a crappy one at that. Now we wait for Chris to come back. See what kind of answers that man has. Oh, hey, hey, you, I was just over here having a snack. I already got my numbers figured out. What'd you figure out? Well, let's, let's hear your numbers first. No, 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 no. They already heard mine, so you, I need to hear yours. I can't change mine, it's already on camera. So let's see what you figured out. So, I okay. found one truck. Okay. It didn't have the bed on it, but I, I uh, measured from the front of the trailer okay. to the the frame or the whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Okay. 27 inches. Okay. So I was off by four. All right. So we gave ourselves 11 inches here for extra play in case we do some weird stuff. We came up with about five foot eight inches. Okay. But like you did the same thing I did. It's just, I didn't have to build this. Oh, you, you got five foot eight inches off of your 20. Well, you know, foot? no, I was just going to uh, okay. measure out the gap. And then all of a sudden at that point, now you measure from that point to that point. Now that you're here, we know how long this needs to be. We'll put the truck back in place straight and we'll see. Hold on guys, I shut the camera off and then Chris said. I, I also came up with another number. Okay. Um, hold on, I forgot the number. <laughs> so are you checking? We're not even in place yet. That, you, that gap might just be way too big. All right. Right around there. That's 27. No, I said 23. Oh, okay. I'm so gonna go off my, my number. Okay, 23 inches. I need the tape measure. Five foot 10. So yesterday we got all, a lot of our figuring done here on the actual gooseneck portion of the trailer. And I still gotta do a little bit more thinking today on exactly how we're gonna tie this in. So now we have 29 inches to play with on the actual gooseneck coupler and there's eight inches within that. So really from 21 inches to 28 inches is where this portion of the trailer needs to sit. And I'm gonna try to hit it about mid range. That way we still have room to adjust up and down. It's an adjustable hitch. And without having it here, we're taking a risk, but hopefully this works out. 
Now, one thing I've gone back and forth is, should I have the actual vertical parts here all the way at the edge of the trailer, which allows me more area um, or surface area to weld all the way around, versus if I were just to put them right about there, which I think would look better, instead of having to come all the way out, because that means um, that means our gooseneck portion is gonna have to turn pretty, pretty sharply and significantly to hit to the center point, whereas if they were more inside, it's not as sharp of a turn to get to there. Now, sometimes my brain works really well in terms of planning things, and sometimes I gotta sit there and see it. There's been hundreds of times I've been in a Home Depot aisle, like building something that I had in my head out of all the parts and pieces I have in their bins to figure out exactly what I need. This project's kind of been no different. So I'm just gonna start cutting pieces here, start clamping things together, and then we're just gonna build off of that. So this right here is gonna be one of our verticals, but obviously to put it right here, I'm gonna to need to do some sort of other bracing inside there. So it's probably just gonna end up way out here, even though that's kind of goofy looking to me. Now that we've got our two verticals in place, I'm trying to figure out here, I think if we just go from here straight at an angle, it's gonna look cheesy and goofy. So I'm thinking about coming off straight for a second, um, maybe about 28 inches or so. Then from there, oh, that's where we start to make our turn to hit our center point here. Obviously every joint and every angle and every turn that we put in this, we're creating a weak spot, but we can gusset everything. And we're gonna hope for the best because we're not putting again a million pounds on this thing, I don't think. Maybe we'll test it, but I don't know. And again, I'm creating a lot more work for myself, but I think if we end up, but once we come over, we are currently too tall to meet our uh, 29 inches. So at this point, we'll need to put a break coming down like so, which will meet where the actual gooseneck coupler is. The only reason I wanna do that is because I've seen it and it looked cool. <laughs> we totally could have just set these at the right height, but I think this looks cooler, taller, and then that means we also have to just die it back down like I've seen on some of the big gooseneck trailers. Oh man. So I just ran the math right now and assuming nothing weird happens, which is a chance something weird could happen, but we need 12 foot eight to finish this out. We have 12 foot eight and three eighths. I don't know if we just got really lucky or something weird's about to happen. But hopefully this works out, cause it's not like we can just go buy three feet of this. Like you need to buy the whole 20 foot stick. So let's go 28 inches here. Let's get these over here. And I think at this point, I'm just gonna have to start tacking things in place cause there's no way for me to, I mean, I could probably clamp from the side there, but it's probably better we just start tacking stuff into place. first pieces of our tongue here uh, tacked in place. And one of the things when I was like picking out the material I wanted to use for the tongue was I didn't want to go with something too skinny and it looked too tukey. Tukey, tukey's a word, right? I don't know, I grew up tukey being a word. I don't know if we might have gone too big at this point with the two by four. Um, I don't know, I mean, it was that or the two by three. I, I probably got to see when this trailer's all together. We're, we're looking pretty hefty here. It probably doesn't help that I have my, my little braces in there right now, holding everything nice and in place and level, but she gonna be a beefy girl up front, that's for sure. Now I just checked the opening at the top versus the opening at the bottom. It's basically opened up like that at a V at the top. So we're gonna use a ratchet strap right now. I'm gonna pull those together and I'm just gonna take a piece of like that uh, inch and a half by inch and a half there. We'll tack it in the back right there to hold these two true to each other. Let's get that hooked on. And let's crank it together. Probably don't need this clamp on here anymore. It's not doing us any good. I mean, we couldn't have got that better if we tried. We are, we're 51 and a 16th, but by the time we uh, cut our bar at 51 and an eighth, I'll let that spread this. Now, if I had enough two by four stock or even two by three, I would do that across the back. I don't have that. I don't know if I'm gonna get another stick. This thing's already getting super heavy. So I'm thinking some smaller stuff's gonna be better. Visually, not so much, but weight wise, we gotta really start thinking about some weight.
So we've got that tacked in place, so this should hold now. But we're gonna run into that issue again right here. But before we do that, let's just get it tightened into place. Cause honestly, I don't have the material to cross that yet. But let's get her where we wanna be. Now's the fun part, cause now we're playing a guessing game getting from there to here without actually having our gooseneck coupler itself. So we're just kind of, like I said, we're just, we're just going, we're going to pretend that's it. It's five inch, so our coupler's four and a quarter, four and a half, I believe. I think if I can get it to about there, we're close enough. Like, we'll call that good. Now, this probably isn't a shock to anybody, but I'm no genius. So when it comes to like doing angles and stuff like this, when we're not building it on a computer, and even then, Dave's the genius for that and can basically spit out every measurement and degree and angle that you need to cut your stuff, and it makes it really easy. I, I don't know, AutoCAD. So, we just do things the old school way. I went ahead and just put a piece of scrap bar across there that holds that so we don't need our ratchet strap anymore. Then what I did is I picked center, center, and I ran this straight bar here because that's going to tell me where these two side pieces need to meet. Obviously you can see the truck isn't exactly perfectly lined up with the trailer. I feel like this is the next best method here. Um, I've got one piece clamped in place right here. I'm gonna basically get the angle I like and mark up underneath this so I know exactly what angle to cut. Um, I don't know, whatever piece I end up cutting the angle out of. I probably should have just made this out of one piece and ended up pie cutting it, but I feel like I'd have to know the angle to be able to do that. I've tacked both sides over there, that way they don't wanna fall off. I've got my height being held up by this clamp and um, this piece of stock right there. And then I just basically brought it together to where they centered out. This little uh, piece of scrap was just a hair too short, but it was the straightest one that I had. So I've gone ahead and marked out where our cut is gonna be. And these cuts are gonna be a little tricky because you can kind of see, it might not show up on camera, how that side doesn't exactly mate in to where this corner would be. So I'm gonna actually try and cut there and then square back that way. So we're almost making a notch or like a bird's mouth for this to mate up. Not sure if this is gonna work. We're gonna try one side first and see if we screw everything up, but. I got my new bandsaw blades. So we're gonna swap that out because I wanna make sure this cut is like as perfect as we can get it. So here's kind of what I think the cut needs to look like. Again, I don't, I don't really know if that little bird's mouth is gonna work like I think it is, but hopefully it does. Now the cuts didn't turn out super, super perfect, but I think we are good enough here. So I've got everything just kind of tacked in place. Haven't really figured out what we're gonna do here in terms of making this turn down. Um, if we're gonna have enough material or not, not sure yet. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm probably gonna take the 3 16 inch sheet metal that we have, and I'm gonna make some straps that go over all of these joints. Um, so I'm gonna weld the joints up, grind them smooth, then put straps over top of them as reinforcement for every single joint. Cause this is where all of the weight of the trailer is gonna be. Um, I mean, obviously the axles, but when this thing's bouncing up and down, I wanna make sure we don't crack this ton, because that's gonna be not a fun day. This old girl is getting heavy quick, and something that just hit me is, obviously we did trailer axles with no brakes, because this thing wasn't gonna be this ungodly heavy. The brakes on the mini truck aren't great. I don't know what's gonna happen when we go to tow this thing the first time. I don't, I don't know what the trailer weighs, but it's not light. Um, this, this whole contraption right here definitely did not help our cause. <laughs> Well, we're making pretty good progress over here. I've got a good amount of the welding done everywhere other than where I'm gonna be putting in gussets because you guys kind of reminded me, hey, you probably shouldn't weld the whole thing until you put the gusset in, then you don't have to notch the gusset and do all kinds of weird stuff. So like inside of here, there's gonna be a good sized gusset. I gotta say, I feel like the more I'm into this project, the better my welds are starting to look. I mean, I feel like that's looking pretty decent. That one looks pretty good. You know, getting to these inside joints, I wanted to make sure those boogers were like heavily welded, but I think, we're, I think we're starting to get this whole welding thing. Now on these outsides, um, I ground it down smooth because I'm gonna put, again, a strap that goes right there. So I don't want to have to fight the weld or anything like that. It's gonna get in my way. Like now, we need to get these gussets in. That way I can actually move the mini truck out of the way so I can start welding up underneath. It's kind of a hassle right now to do it with the mini truck, but I don't want to pull the mini truck out because it's kind of holding up this whole thing level with our little support that we have right there. We could probably pull it out, but I want to make sure we get these gussets in first because I know everything right now is sitting perfectly level. So I've got my two gussets marked out here as well as the two straps. This is all 3 16 Should probably use quarter inch, but we don't have that. So we're working with what we got here. I'm telling you guys, I, I feel like 
I'm in a groove right now on my welds. If any of you guys are watching this video, and kind of the reason I like to make some of these videos where I'm totally stepping out of my comfort zone and not just buying a $400 trailer uh, from Harbor Freight like I could have totally done and decided, you know what, let's try to build a trailer because we've never done that before. But yeah, if you guys are watching these videos, like hopefully they motivate you to, you know what, maybe go buy a welder. You know, maybe try to build something crazy. I'm totally a hands-on learner. I gotta do something to be able to learn it. I can't read about it. Watching videos doesn't do a whole lot for me. Um, I gotta physically do it. You gotta screw up, and then you gotta figure out why you screwed up, and then you get better, and I'm pretty freaking proud of myself right now looking at some of these wells. I think this is looking rad. Now the next step here is getting these straps put on, and albeit we do have an oxyacetylene torch right there, I've never used it. I'm not gonna blow myself up tonight trying to figure out what the heck the right mixture is and all that crap. So I'm hoping I can heat this up enough right now to make that bend. Using the old Ben Burns, burns o -matic. I don't know if this will get hot enough for 316s. We're gonna try it. Worst case scenario, Zach will be here tomorrow and uh, we'll play with the oxyacetylene. All right, burns o -matic. do some burning. Three hours later. Uh, we might be onto something that's going in the back right here. Holding all the heat in. Well, I never should have doubted the old uh, burns o -matic there. We got her nice and bent around, so I'm gonna weld this in place right now before it cools off too much. Okay, strap welded on. Um, I, I think this is called a strap. I don't know, you guys let me know what this is actually called in the industry. There's a lot of contaminants like in this piece of sheet metal. So we got a little couple, so we got a couple little weird spots right there. And then I, I think I sneezed and got a little wire stuck on there, but we'll get that off later. Um, other than that though, I think we're looking halfway decent here. But I gotta wrap it up for the night. Um, at some point, my quality is just gonna go 10 times worse. Let's just quit while we're on a high here and we're ahead. <laughs> like a whole update on tonight. So let me jump back over here because that, that miracle just happened right now. Um, don't mind my hair, I was totally feeling myself right now on that fan just blowing my hair like I was a movie star or whatever. Um, so in terms of the trailer here, we've got pretty much everything gusseted in. I gotta finish welding that gusset right there but that should be the extent of the gusseting for the actual like this part of the tongue. Um, let me tell you guys, again, I, I keep saying it, I think my welding is just getting better and better every time we go but it has been, <laughs> a ton of freaking welding going on here. But that's not the big news. The big news is, as you can probably hear behind me, the 6.0 is running. The main thing that's gonna happen tonight is we actually gotta do a whole vehicle shuffle here because Zach's got a customer coming in. So all of this has to get out, bring the customer's vehicle in, um, and then try and fit most of it back in. The 6.0 is not gonna end up being back in here tonight, but that also means we're gonna be moving the trailer tonight for the first time under its like, own weight here so that should be interesting um obviously we're gonna use the forklift but regardless let's get over here let's get let's get some 6-0 updates listen to this girl Woo! sounds good yeah yeah do it again let's see if we'll do it again this is the 6-0 issue right here will she fire up again on her own oh! you did it buddy good work good work don't let me hang it don't let me hang it good work so literally that entire tearing the thing apart, putting it back together, then tearing it apart again, it was one O-ring, right? It was just an O-ring, that was it? Yeah. It was this man. Let's be able to hear each other. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Apparently it, so this is the O-ring that goes into the sandpipe. So these feed through the oil rail, this goes in there. I mean, at, you know, after you don't grab it with pliers. Okay feeds in there and then it seals the whole high pressure oil system to the to the rail that feeds the injectors um, and it blew that o-ring out so what happens is it's trying to fill the tube and it's just leaning out of there instead of 
going up and filling the rest of everything with pressure. Gotcha. And if it gets big enough, you have a crank no start because there's not enough RPM to make the volume to make the pressure to start the car. So it's not that the 6.0 never ran, it's that the 6.0 wouldn't start, or it was, it was a hard start. So you, you would, saw... Yeah, you either the thing and fire up, you know, granted, the numbers were off, like it was working really hard to run. Like, if you were to try to drive it, it would either continue to blow the O-ring out until it quit running, or you would be like, dude, this thing's a dog. Now that the O-ring's fixed, she builds the pressure, she needs to see on the number side for the thing to say, okay, go ahead and kick over, and well. Woo. So yeah. the funny thing is, is my first week, my new job, same truck, same year, same motor, same issue. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm pretty sure we need to do a cooler in this at some point. So what Zach thinks is, well, we know Papa Rano borrowed this truck. Papa Rano loves air conditioning and he loves to let trucks idle for a long time with the air conditioning going. So what Zach thinks is going on here is the oil cooler is plugged or foul. Something's weird with the oil cooler to where it's letting things heat up. And when you're sitting there idling forever, you're heating up to where that O-ring don't like being that hot and then O-ring fails. I gotta get a couple more welds on this bad boy back here. That way she can move tonight. Uh, I'm kind of excited to see this thing roll and see what it looks like. Obviously, we don't have the coupler yet or anything like that. Hopefully, that comes in the next couple of days, and then we can figure out exactly how we're going to build this. Um, I know they don't made up right now, but I can assure you, they made up. So, I'm going to get the mini truck fired up here, pulled out of the way. She going to go. There she is, there she is. All right, mini truck is pulled out. We opted to just go ahead and actually weld on those leaf hangers. That way if we're coming out here, we hit a bump, something weird happens, we don't risk a tack weld popping off and then things get all kinds of wonky and weird. I'm still gonna leave everything else hand tight, but at least those will be welded on. Okay, so I've gone ahead and kind of made a makeshift hitch here. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. So literally just clamped a couple pieces of steel here. We're gonna put the ball on the forklift we're gonna wedge it up right in between those two. Zach brought up a good point, we should have a back one. I was just gonna leave this front one on, just hook it and pull it. But uh, Zach's like, you're probably gonna wanna stop. So we put the back one on right there. So hopefully the ball sits right here. We drag this thing out and nothing weird happens. That's the theory. There you go, yep, yep. Show them how strong you are, Zach. <laughs> oh, cheese guy. It's super tongue heavy. It's a little tongue heavy, it's a little tongue heavy. So the tongue weight itself is probably like, I don't know, 100 something pounds. All right, buddy, we got enough juice in this battery? There we go. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Get the forklift out of here. taking it out of the shop. It was looking giant inside the shop. Now, can we just make special note of the fact that after Zach crushed my fingers in the hood, he decided we should start putting a little, little light. Just because the hood doesn't say have anyone. Oh, yeah. okay. That's so I didn't get crushed in the hood. Oh, your fingers, yeah. Yeah. your fingers matter. All righty, the 6.0 is alive again. Fingers crossed for, uh, for more than a minute this time. 
Look at that old beast right there. Oh. She sounds good. So we got one of Zach's customers trucks coming in. Oh, we got all this room to play here. He got a gooseneck hitch in there. We'll borrow that. Well, we got everything back in the shop minus the 6 0 The 6 uh, you know, going to be out on the road here. And hopefully, uh, Zach's going to put it through paces, make sure everything's going good, everything looks good, check the computers, check all the whatever. For my next step here, we're basically going to wait until my coupler shows up. That way I know exactly how I want to dye this down into the coupler. Because, again, we're trying to make this look like a full-size, you know, gooseneck. And most goosenecks come over, and then they die down a little bit before they actually get to the gooseneck coupler. I don't want to risk making that cut and then screwing up because it's not like we can just keep getting shorter here, you know? We've got good amount of spacing right now, which is almost exactly where this thing's gonna sit. Um, center of axle's about right there, so this is about what our gap's gonna look like, which I think is freaking perfect. But we could totally screw that up if we make the wrong cut there and things don't work out. So once the coupler gets here, we're gonna jump back on, we'll get that in. Um, Zach's gonna be working on this truck, so I don't wanna be cutting and grinding or anything next to that, so we're gonna take a little bit of a break. When we come back, we should have the coupler. Hopefully, maybe, maybe not. Damn. Uh -huh. Yeah. 